Hey everyone, Chris here from Property Abundance and you're joining me straight after the conclusion of the autumn statement. So in this video, I'm gonna go through what has been announced and then I'm gonna do a follow-up video on what that could mean for property. Now, there are a few things in this autumn statement that are gonna have knock-on impacts directly onto property and some that will have knock-on impacts via the economic measures. So let's go through what's been announced. What do I see as relevant to property straight off the bat? And then we'll do another video. Check back tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe and check back tomorrow to see what the in-depth analysis on the property market and the impact of the property market will be. Um, so please do me a massive favor. Help me out with this channel. Go ahead and like this video. Comment below if you think I've missed anything. And subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest tips and tricks for your property business as well. So let's dive into this. For this one, I'm not going to be doing a smooth presentation. Look, this is going to be me reading my notes because there was a lot to take in there. So first off the bat, okay, they're coming out with some big statements. 110 measures to back business was the headline. So they're talking about cutting business taxes, encouraging investment, cutting planning red tape basically making it easier for businesses to do their thing. All of the big objective here is to create growth, is to create, remove bureaucracy, to allow things to happen in this country more easily. Now, again, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, we're not going to get into that in this video. That's completely up to you and your political decisions. But that is the headline. So how are they going to do it? Well, look, um, firstly, they've cut inflation. OK, now they wanted to obviously remind us you know, probably with the general election coming up, they're looking to remind us of what their achievements are when they came in at the start of term for this round of prime ministers, not, not when the party gained the power, but um, inflation was 11%. Okay, so they've got it from 11% to 4.6%. And the OBR, the Office of Budgetary Responsibility, saying that's likely to fall further. Uh, they're predicting 2.4% by the end of 2024. Now, that's massive because that will have an impact on the Bank of England's decision rates. Uh, sorry, decisions on interest rates. Um, and we all know, if you've watched any of my previous videos, we all know what a big impact that decision has on the property market because it has a direct effect into the cost of borrowing, which has a direct effect on the house pricing market and knock-on effect onto the rental market as well. So we're looking at a continuing reduction of inflation, which is great news for anybody in property. We're likely to see um, a fall in interest rates off the back of that as well, I would say. Uh, universal credit's going up. Okay, so specifically, they've mentioned the local housing allowance is being put up to the 30th percentile of local rates. So it's good news for any landlords that get involved in the DSX sectors within their local market. You're likely to see an increase in the amount of budgets that councils have to be able to offer rooms or flats to their local clients. Uh, pensions have got something as well. So uh, an increase in the state pension by 8.5%, creating a bit more wealth amongst the elderly. 8.5% uh, up in April 2024. Um, then we're going to fast forward a few more here. So the OBR forecasting mild economic growth for the next two years. Now, that's an improvement. Now, the OBR, if you don't know who they are, they're an independent body that assess the, uh, the latest budgets that have come out uh, and basically give their opinion based on you know, economic factors, social factors, as to whether they think they're responsible, whether they think it's implementable. So if you remember back to, I think it was this time last year, wasn't it, actually, when uh, Liz Truss... And her government came out with their budget and they just got panned by the OBR. Uh, much more positive this time, actually forecasting some mild economic growth, which, uh, again, if you've seen any of my later videos recently, we've been looking at a pretty flat economy for the next year or two. Um, you know, I don't think this is a massive turnaround here, but there is a mild amount of growth that they're forecasting there now as well. Uh, boosted investment by 20 billion a year into businesses. So now this is an interesting one, isn't it? So again, certainly as a business owner, this is one I'm very interested in. Uh, it's broken down into several different areas. One of the areas getting a nice boost is skills. Uh, an extra 50 million going into raising the uh, amount of budget for apprentices, specifically in high skill industries like engineering. Uh, planning has some interesting stuff going on as well. Not um, So looking to remove the amount of red tape surrounding planning, uh, specifically for business improvements, so business developments and infrastructure projects. Now, when it comes to house building, um, they are looking at creating three new housing quarters. Now, presumably, again, I don't know the details of this yet because I haven't read it. Uh, but the presumably this is going to be where there's a lot less planning requirement um, for these particular areas. Now, the areas have been identified are Cambridge, London and Leeds. So, again, part of their uh, initiative, I suppose, to try and get more houses built, because we do have, still have a deficit in the numbers of houses being built, um, is to create these reduced planning zones 
so that developers can build more easily, create more affordable housing and unaffordable housing, um, but to create more houses in these areas to basically boost those areas' house building targets. Um, now, really interestingly, so this is a good one. So new permitted development right is coming out. So they are introducing, if you don't know what permitted development rights are first off, these are a series of rights that we have as landlords, as developers, as property owners, where we can do certain things to a property without requiring planning permission. So for example, um, you can do an amount of extension on your property and extend your property to the rear and the side by no more than 50% of the width of the property uh, without planning permission. You can convert a property from a C3 residential property to a C4 HMO property without planning permission. You can just get on and do this stuff. Now they're bringing out a new permitted development right, which again will extend our rights to split houses into two flats um, as long as the exterior remains the same. So we'll be able to convert a property, a house, into like a ground floor and a first floor flat without going through planning applications um, as long as you don't change the exterior of the property. So that's an interesting one. Could open up a whole new area of investment for property developers, for um, opportunities to buy houses and convert them into split level apartments. Um, again, reasons being that we're taking a, a lower costs per square meter property where there's less demand for a bigger house and converting it into much more accessible property. More, many more people can afford to buy one and two bedroom flats and therefore it increases the cost per square meter. So um, whether the property is big enough to really benefit from that, again, that would require a bit more assessment, a bit more investigation into actual local cost per square meters. Uh, but it's an interesting right. I can see the theory there. Uh, what else we got? So uh, innovation, right. So um, 500 million being put into innovation centers to boost the AI industry. That was an interesting one. So again, why do I care from a property perspective? Well, stuff like this, where you get investment into an area, it creates a flow of people to that area. Um, you know, to start with, you get all the building teams going there to, to construct whatever's being invested into, to, uh, to construct the infrastructure and the buildings that, that are going up in that area. Great for service accommodation, particularly, you know, considering I run a company called Trade Stays, we focus a lot of energy into that construction sector um, and, you know, providing the accommodation for people traveling for construction jobs. So always really interesting for me when I see in investment in certain geographical areas because it creates this movement of people. On top of this, the service accommodation industry benefiting again by a further reviewing, uh, no commitment here yet, but reviewing further ways to boost the film industry. Again, a big song and dance made, no pun intended, uh, a big song and dance made about the success of the UK film industry and how Barbie was shot in Watford, um, but wanting to look at how we can expand that. Now, again, great for service accommodation providers because not only do you get the uh, construction teams going to construct new studios to build you know, the infrastructure around that, but then once you've got them built, you get lots of film teams coming to the area. Again, great for service accommodation providers. So we have stuff um, in Watford already, we have stuff in North London, um, and we benefit from the, the film industry that is around that part of the country as well already. Uh, what else we got? So, oh, this is a good one. Again, same principle, manufacturing and green energy receiving 4.5 billion over the next five years to invest into strategic manufacturing, uh, especially for greening programs, and a further 960 million for green energy development. Now, what does that mean? Well, look, again, this is talking about stuff like uh, nuclear development, stuff like offshore wind, stuff like solar, things like, uh, they even mentioned hydrogen in there today, things that are trying to decarbonize our energy footprint as a country. Now, again, why is that relevant for property? Well, it's relevant specifically, again, for serviced accommodation, because when you get a lot of people traveling to these sites, not only to build them, but then maintaining them as well. You get a lot of maintenance contracts where people will come periodically, maintain the setup, go away again, come back, periodic assessments. Great for people traveling around, great for service accommodation providers. Um, then we've got, as part of the leveling, leveling up initiative, uh, tax free, uh, sorry, tax relief and funding for investment zones and free ports. Uh, so newer zones announced in both the West Midlands, where I am, uh, the East Midlands, where I'm from, <laughs> and Yorkshire and Wrexham. So again, like, um, what does this mean? Well, this means, you know, if they're going to be creating these tax incentives for high tech, specifically high tech manufacturing to move to a certain area, again, just good news for actually both industries that I operate in service accommodation and HMOs, because not only will you get the builders moving to build these facilities, you'll get the engineers going in to construct the, the machinery afterwards. Uh, you'll get lots of suppliers, lots of customers traveling to the area to go and inspect them. 
um, and you'll get lots of, you know, right or wrongly, lower paid employment in the area that are actually working within the facilities. Great for HMOs. So again, um, I see this investment as a good thing into those different areas. Uh, right, small businesses. So a couple of things affecting small businesses, not really going to have massive impact on the property industry necessarily, but could have an impact on your operating as a property business. Uh, so business rates. So again, the one year of 75% discount is being extended for a further year. Now that applies to property, uh, sorry, to businesses in the retail, hospitality, hospitality and leisure sectors. Um, again, if you have serviced accommodation, you can put it on business rates and you do a qualify for that relief. Um, again, whether it's worth you converting to it for just one year's discount, that's a question you need to weigh up. You need to go into the numbers of that and look at, well, what's the saving versus if you're on business rates, is it actually more expensive than council tax? Um, or are you going to save money long term here? Do that calculation before you make any jumps as it is only a short term measure. It's only a one year measure. Uh, definitely some savings to be made within that year, but is it the right thing long term? You need to look into that. Um, other things, so the self-employed having class two national insurance completely abolished and class four national insurance cut by 1%. Again, not massive differences to bottom lines, but uh, saving for people nonetheless. 25%. Uh, oh, this is right. Okay, so I know what this one is. So this is the R&D claims. So um, a 25% tax break for anybody investing in their business. So for every pound you invest into your business, you get 25% of that amount back as long as you can prove it's for research and development projects. This is a huge tax break. Now, this has been around for a little while. It's been around for the last couple of years, but there was no commitment on the government to extend this. Now they've made this permanent. Okay, so this will be available every single year. Um, now, that's great because this encourages huge amounts of business investment, both, you know, within my company, it's a real it's a real godsend because it means that anything we spend on investing and trying to build our business, which creates jobs, creates wealth for my employees, that means that we can get some of that money back. So, again, this this kind of initiative from from myself, from my, my perspective as a business owner is only good because this will only result in higher levels of employment, which is just great for the economy as a whole. Um, National living wage is going up. Okay, so again, <laughs> employing people is going to get more expensive, unfortunately, uh, from business owner's perspective. From a country's perspective, it's probably good. Again, I've got questions around whether this is not going to have a knock-on impact onto inflation because, you know, the Conservative Party have been hammering, the, you know, banging the drum about inflation, but then announce a big raise in the national living wage. So that's kind of, kind of, kind of counterproductive. Uh, you know, when they were talking about not wanting to increase the wages of people in public services, that was to avoid inflation. But now they've come in and said, well, we're going to put everybody's salaries up. Yeah, so it's kind of like that doesn't really align. Um, and finally, income tax so, and national insurance. So national insurance being dropped by 2% for everybody. OK, so from 12% to 10%. Now, that means if you're on an average salary of 35K a year, that's going to save you about £450 a year. Um, obviously, every, everybody with a salary above 12K or 12.5K actually benefiting from that straight away. That's coming in on January the 6th. Now, look, there's quite a lot of things there that could impact property, right? Now, by the way, if you found this useful, just getting a quick download of the key points from this, please do me a massive favor. Hit that like button. Comment what I've forgotten. I'm sure I've missed stuff. Comment below what have I forgotten? What impact do you think some of these measures are going to have on the UK property market? And subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. Now, look, if you're looking for more detailed analysis, check back tomorrow. I'm going to be re re uh, redoing this video or redoing another video, I should say, looking into the actual practical implications, seeing what the banks say, seeing how the markets actually react to this. And then we'll come back with a bit more data to actually analyze and get our teeth into to see what the immediate ramifications look like they might be. Um, and also, if you want a bit more hands-on help, if you want to help get started with your property journey, check in the link down below uh, or in the comments of this video where I'll have set a link where you can book a half hour consultation call completely free of charge with one of my team where we'll give you a bit of coaching on what your next step in your property business should be, whether you've already set it up, whether you're looking to set it up, whether you're just not quite sure what your next play should be, get yourself one of those free calls with my team and we'll understand where you are right now, what you're looking to achieve, what resources you've got to play with and give you some advice on your next best steps. So check in the link description down below for that link and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.